Okay, so let's say that we just finished up uh, generating these random dice rolls and we want to create a chart now. If we select our data that we want to incorporate in the chart here, and then we can do insert chart, or we can click it if you have a tab like this, insert chart, and it's easy peasy, right? And so it's gonna look weird right off the bat because you'll see since we selected both the roles and the frequency columns, it thinks that we want all of this to be included in the, I guess, body or whatever you'd call it of the chart. Um, and so that's a little weird at first. There are a few ways around this. One thing we could do is just select the frequency column. Um, but if we already are in too deep and we don't want to backtrack, we can click next and do first column as label. Right, and so now it's saying, oh, okay, you want the first column to be the labels for um, the numbers that are actually represented in the chart. All right, and you can see here, there are different types of charts. Um, so we could do a column, which is basically a vertical bar chart. We could do a bar chart here, which is essentially horizontally orientated instead of uh, vertically oriented, orient orientated. I don't know if orientated is a word. We can do a pie chart. Right, just a slightly different way of representing this, seeing more proportionality uh, of the overall whole. We can do an area chart. I'm not really sure what that is. Okay, it's basically a bar chart represented as like the area underneath the curve, and the curve is the line that's generated by the different points uh, of our frequencies. So it doesn't really apply here. Line chart doesn't really apply as well because that's just like a bar chart without the bars. X, Y doesn't apply here because we don't really have an X and Y variable. Right, so we're just gonna stick to a column, but you can play around with that if you'd like. If I wanted to change the look of this, I could do like 3D look. Ooh, that's pretty fancy, look at that. I can make it cylinders, pyramids. That's interesting, cones. Yeah, these are features that I've never played with before. Now let's go back to bars, uh, simple. Okay, there you go. Uh, what does stacked do? It changes nothing here. Uh, I think it would that would be the case if we had multiple columns. Um, okay, see, point being, if you play around with this feature, sometimes it's going to fundamentally change the, the chart that you're creating. Um, so we don't want to do that. Uh, let's keep the 3D look just for the hell of it. Uh, so we already did that. Data range. So yeah, so once we have our chart type picked, we can either click the next step or click the actual next button. And uh, for the data range, let's say like I forgot a row here and I didn't want to go all the way back and redo this again. I can click this button, select data range, and now it shows me this and I can click and drag again, right? So let's say for example, oh, or in this case I added one too many, right? The last row was like a total or something and I didn't want to include it here. I can do that and now it's gonna drop that column that's now unselected. All right, so I'm gonna go back and highlight that again to get all our stuff in here. Or you could change the numbers in the actual line of code here, um, but if that's intimidating, don't worry about it. You can click and drag. So we're all good there. Let's go to next, data series, uh, frequency. I'm not really gonna worry about this. Chart elements. This is something we might be interested in. So let's say we want to add a title here. Uh, let's make it dice rolls. And leave it at that. I feel like I left you hanging. Uh, if we wanted a subtitle for stats class, then there you go. You have a subtitle down there. Um, we don't really need that in our context. Say we wanted to label stuff though. Um, well, for starters, let's say we, we see frequency over here and we, we want to get rid of that. We think it looks kind of dumb. If we click display legend, now that's gone. And now we can name our axes, right? So the X axis here, what runs horizontally, that represents the dice roll, right? So we can say dice roll. And then the Y axis, what goes vertically, that represents the frequency. And now we have that named. And we could play around with more. We don't have a z-axis here because it's not like a three-dimensional chart. Um, and let's go ahead and click finish then. And now we have our chart. You can click it and drag it around if you'd like. Uh, 
I, I believe you can add borders. I'm not sure how to do that off the top of my head. Okay, I just paused the video to figure it out. Um, what you can do here is if you click on this, and then up in here you should have like the object tab appear, assuming you're using the tab view. Then we can click line, line style, and click continuous. And then that adds a line around the exterior. And I think since we have it as a 3D chart, it kind of looks 3D on the outside as well. So that's why it's like a darker shade um, on the bottom and on the right side. Um, we can change the color, so let's make it black, right? So that's one way you can add a border to it. Um, but yeah, some basic stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that for the sake of simplicity, uh, but that's a basic way to create a bar chart using LibreOffice or Excel.